from her class, but you guys, it's so wonderful the way the community supports each other in this way. Um, it's really exciting. I don't know about how other people who've been attending these feel, but I have learned so much today about so many things that I never would have thought about if you didn't bring your generous uh, intelligences to the table. And so I really appreciate the time and effort you put into the presentations and the way the staff supports the project. I think that's a really special thing about working at the school. And I'm, I'm glad to be here. Um, I know that most of you seniors are glad to be going here. So, um, but I, I think you'll remember this clip. When you look back, you'll really value what it was um, that the school is all about. Um, with no further words, I think I will just uh, introduce Crashface to Steve. Yes, go, Crash. I think balance between the rich and the poor is the oldest and most fatal element of other problems. I walked past the kitchen door and into the living room where I greeted every relative of mine. I sat on my usual spot next to the green lamp. It, it's a routine. Every, every Sunday, my family gathers at my grandfather's house. We sit in the living room with wooden chairs. This weekend, my cousin Manuel was next to me, Jose on the other side. At first, I pretended as if I was interested in what the other had to say. Then, they, they started talking about corruption and went on to business. Everything was pretty ordinary, until my uncle Peter slammed his short glass against a coffee table and stared furious at my grandfather practices. I'm tired of all this nonsense. Our horrible tax system is making me feel powerless. Darling, he turned to his wife, my aunt Laura. We're going to have to sell our summer house and rent our apartment in New York for at least a year. I glanced over at Laura. The look on her face said she was pretty. She was not very happy about this. She rolled her eyes over her feet. It's not fair. I love that house. But it did not end there. My grandfather Praxis stood up from his comfy couch. This is enough. This is enough. This is enough. We have the worst tax structure in the Americas. Everyone's so surprised. Everyone, he Praxis declared. We are doomed by the government and the society. Hello, my name is Praxis Castillo. This term, I researched tax structure in the Dominican Republic. The title of my senior oral defense presentation is what we pay for, tax structure in the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic's tax structure is currently based mainly in five taxes. The debits, income taxes, excise taxes on mineral oils, excise, ta excise taxes on alcoholic beverages, snobs, and tariffs. The structure is very difficult to understand and to manage. The complexity of our system makes it difficult for most citizens to interpret the tax structure, and many do not pay what they actually owe. According to Los Camos de Presupuesto, from every 100 pesos that the government has to spend, 28 come from loans. This means that the government is not collecting enough taxes to pay back what it already owes and has to indebt itself every year in order to maintain the nation. You can see other uh, taxes that are not remaining are hydrocarbons, uh, donations, and also uh, uh, taxes on the rent. Current tax structure in the Dominican Republic is also unjust. In April of 2015, according to Sistema de Voluntad de la República Dominicana, well, even though at first glance we can see that the Dominican Republic tax system has a similar tax structure to other Latin American countries. On average, it is very different to the OECD further developed countries. The fact that the greater weight of responsible in direct taxes indicates that unlike what happens in Latin American countries, the more developed tax systems of other countries tend to be more progressive to the extent that they rest on increased direct taxation. Here, the article affirms that one of the differences between developed countries and the Dominican Republic is the fact that indirect taxes are already high in this country. In fact, higher than 50%, making the more developed countries more progressive since the developed countries have more taxes coming from direct taxation, which are the taxes that are levied on the income or profits of the consumer, rather than indirect taxes, which are the taxes that are levied on the income or profits of the supplier. Clearly, the article position is that the imperfections in our tax structure are highlighted by the difference between our system and that of all the other Latin American countries. The fact is that by depending on too many people with low income, the government is not able to maintain a stable economy. 
leading to a dramatic increase in the national debt. The evidence upside is suggested in terms of the tax structure. Our nation is falling behind other countries in Latin America, in Latin America and around the globe. As you can see, uh, our country is over 50%, in fact, almost 63%, and other Latin American countries are a little bit below, but the first level of countries have a 44%. This is partly because companies are finding ways to evade taxes, taking advantage of benefits and exemptions built in the tax code. The DGII has estimated more than 60% of the total tax revenue comes from indirect taxes, such as interest and excise taxes. Companies are using the existing laws to increase short-term profits without realizing that paying taxes benefits them in the long run. The nation we live in is built and maintained by tax revenue. As you can see, this is the amount that the government uh, gets by collecting taxes every year, 190 billion pesos. And this is what it has to spend, 566 billion pesos. So a deficit is 75 billion pesos, which is what the government has to, uh, has to take a loan from. In the Dominican Republic, the government cannot penetrate private companies easily. If companies do not pay but they have their fair share of taxation, the government is forced to borrow from other countries, which in the long run creates more problems. The majority of taxes are paid by people earning low salaries. An article published in Cietelia informs us that many people are paying fewer or no taxes because of their income. The adjustment has to come from the income because we have an unequal system and the poor are the ones that are paying the most taxes. The article asserts that the low-income citizens pay the most taxes. And the article goes on to assert that the majority of taxes are paid with people by, with low salaries. Such limited revenue leads the government to ask companies for help or to take foreign loans in order to satisfy the demands of the people. Government finance development through tax revenue when when money collected from taxes diminishes, the government has less money to spend. In the Dominican Republic, the government has many commitments and few resources to invest in society. On December 17, 2014, the article of Leonel Impuestos y Fiscal in the Dominican Cecilio asserts that there has to be a redistribution of the GDP in the existing sectors of the Dominican Republic, mainly because the sum of money currently given to the different sectors of the state is insufficient. As you can see, uh, it's not sufficient because we have to take out loans from 133 uh, billion pesos. If you have pressure of 14% and 4% of the GDP goes only to one sector, that is education, it only makes 10% for the government. And if in addition you need to give 1.3% to a central bank, you're only left with 8.7% to govern the country. It's clearly insufficient. So the issue is where to increase tax revenue and establish a fiscal responsibility law to increase revenue and set a cap on spending to avoid deficit or debt increase. Lorraine is warning that the debt of the nation is increasing rapidly and in order to stop the trend, Fernandez proposes we redistribute the tax funds and cap the spending. This will allow people to increase their income because of the growth of the economy, which will lead to less dependence on direct taxes paid by Dominican citizens. As you can see, 4% go to education, and with that 4%, they, uh, they upgrade 11,200 uh, uh, rooms of the, of the schools, and they enroll 850,000 uh, students in public schools, and 60 billion pesos goes to the uh, modernization of the hospitals, and 58 billion to social security. Meanwhile, the deficit is still positive, and this has, to, this has negative consequences. As the index of the economic freedom points out, the overall tax burden equals 13.9% of total domestic income, the government spending of 8.1% of the total domestic output, and the deficit is still over 2.5% of the GDP, and the public debt equals 35% of the GDP. Even though the nation is slowly moving forward, it's still increasing, and the GDP cannot cover much of the deficit, which leads to only one option, loans. 
As you can see, it's uh, slowly going down, but the debt is still increasing. So because every year we have to borrow money from other countries, and every year we have to pay back the money and also get other loans. What should such reforms look like? As an increase growth in 2014, the next step is to implement green taxes and unify fuels, fuel taxes in one single tax. A recent case that such tribunal reform could help the TR's economy. There is also claims that they suggest to generalize the tax to all products. This compensates to the regressiveness effect of the tax with the direct transfer to the poorest continent of the nation. In other words, Rich believes that in order to create a healthy tax structure, there has to be a tax reform in this nation, which could improve the economy in terms of taxation. But is this accurate? According to Lugano Fernandez, the tax reform, although it's not enough, there has to be an increase in salaries and a redistribution of funds. Fernandez assures us that the salary increase is key to the growth of the nation, but in increase believes that the tax reforms it, it was really going to be effective. Which approach is correct? An article published in Economista Dominicana in 2012 states that, however, we believe that the decline will not be as severe as some people refer, because first, the reform will be implemented gradually. Second, it is anticipated that the economy will grow at around 4 to 5 percent, which may result in an increase in the purchasing power of the population before the reform is implemented completely. A physical precision implies that the reform will actually trigger an increase in the purchasing power of consumers, increasing the consumption of goods and services produced in the Dominican Republic, but it's necessarily true. If the laws are followed, then yes, I believe that the economy will improve as a result of the tax reform. The Dominican Republic's tax system is not easy to analyze, and since 1990, companies have been finding ways to use the laws in their favor, leaving the government without sufficient funds to run the country. More than 67% of the population earns salaries below minimum wage near minimum wage, and the, the, the citizens pay the most taxes to the government. In other words, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. This has to stop. We need specific reforms that generate more jobs and reduce inequality in the nation. This will lead to a greater Dominican Republic, one that can eventually compete with other Latin American countries and perhaps even developed countries. Sometimes he's pointing at the computer with the clicker. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you said that the deficit, I don't know what year you mentioned that the deficit was 75 billion. Is that the yield? That's the deficit of 2015. Just one year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deficit. Compounded on the year before, like, or it will be that much again next year. It will be plus that much again next year. Closer than what you can actually. Yeah, wow. Yes. Can you go back to your slide that shows the different breakdown? This one. This one. Okay. Um, can you run? Can you just explain this chart? Because the current tax is 18%, right? Okay, so the proposal is 13 to 15 percent, or is this your proposal? No, no, my proposal is not uh, actually to 13 percent. My proposal is uh, a so tax reform okay. that will reallocate the, the funds that the government uh, takes each time it collects taxes. So that instead of, for example, uh, giving uh, 5 percent to the military, it takes Three percent of military, and that other two percent is spent it on education or healthcare or uh, social security. Of the three things that you mentioned before, 
So these are the current, this is the current tax structure. These are the things that are currently happening right now. Yes. Okay. Can you go back to the slide? I'm sorry, Robert. Can you go back to the slide that shows health, education, no, education, health, and then, yeah, that one that has three columns? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you showed that this is, hello. you showed that this is a, a um, you showed that education, the percentage of the budget that's allocated for education is 4%. What's the percent educated or given toward health care? Uh, I am not uh, sure, but it's 60 billion uh, pesos, so it's uh, somewhere around uh, 242 percent. Okay, and then protection social, is that like social security? Is that like um, money for people when they get older and can no longer work? Yeah, it's uh, to, to give services to the, uh, to the population and the people that are uh, vulnerable to uh, any, any, any dangers. Okay, so like elders and the handicapped and things yeah. like that. Yes. Yeah. Something I noticed in the next part of the is how there are lots of informal sectors of the economy where basically you pay people cash so you don't pay taxes. Yes. Um, if any of your research talk about um, how large that part of the economy is and how that affects the tax structure? Well, uh, the scope of my research didn't uh, cover that, but uh, I know that from every 100 pesos, 67 it comes from people with uh, many uh, salaries near minimum wage. So uh, you can uh, you can get that, that you want to pay. a lot of people are not paying taxes because, for example, uh, many uh, nannies or uh, chauffeurs do not pay uh, taxes on government because they, they earn uh, salaries. Many of them earn salaries below the uh, minimum wage. So uh, I'm not uh, sure what exact percentage that is, but I'm sure it's, it's all. Nobody probably should, right? Yeah, because it's not that. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go There are two parts of the tax structure that are built to try to get a cash only economy to get taxes from a cash economy, right? For for example, um, how how can you pull that's such an interesting question, Sarah. Like if people are paying cash for things rather than paying tax at the end of the year, through sales tax you pull money out of the cash economy, right? But there's stiffness is a sales tax, right? Uh, can you rephrase the question? So when, when I say I go to a restaurant and I pay a bill, yeah. okay, and at the bottom of my bill there's two extra taxes down there. One says I T D I S. What's yeah. that? Debits. Yeah. What is it? That's the that's the tax that uh, people that that's the that's the progressive tax that you that you pay every time. The other progressive tax that you pay every time you make a a purchase or that uh, uh, you, call, you make a basically all the sales are, uh, are with the with the tax. Okay. That is a flat eighteen uh, percent. Okay, and businesses are required by law to charge me that tax, right? Yes. But then, if somebody doesn't give me a bill, they just tell me that what you just bought costs one thousand pesos. And they give me money they don't give you a bill. For example, there's, then there's no tax charge, right? Well, they, or, or they probably ta uh, charge it, but they don't tell you. But what do they do with money? Do they then send it in a little envelope to the government that says, Dear government, oh, here is no. the portion. The deal, I know what you're saying. Okay. Uh, you're talking about direct and indirect taxes. Like direct taxes are the, are the taxes that you pay directly to the government and don't have any legal uh, use. Like, you don't uh, you don't uh, levy the the tax to a consumer. You have to pay the like for example mortgage or uh -huh. uh, any property. Uh -huh. 
uh, you have to pay directly to the government. You, you cannot uh, give it to someone else. But the, the indirect taxes, uh, you can uh, make consumers pay for them. Good. And then there's a third kind of economy that happens where no tax gets collected because it's just cash across, right? And the person who gets who takes my money into his hand never reports to the government yes. that I gave that money, right? Yeah. How much do you think is being lost from the economy that way? That's what you were asking, right? Okay. How much is being lost by people that are not uh, paying taxes to the government? Yeah, just cash economy. So like, uh, I don't have an exact percentage because as the way we should take cover the forest. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's uh, it's a lot. substantial. Yeah. So if we figured out ways to get that money back into the direct or indirect tax system, would it improve the problem? Would, I mean, would it help? Of course, the I mean, the, the tax reform covers it up basically because you have more education and the people have more uh, opportunities. So instead of uh, them having to uh, to not go to school, they actually go to school, they, they learn, they understand uh, everything that has to do with the, with the, the tax system, this country, what's, uh, basically what's right and what's wrong. Because uh, what you're saying are people that uh, are doing the wrong one thing, getting, getting away with it. So uh, it all goes with the tax reform. And it would be interesting to know how many people that is. And how yeah. much money is being lost to that? Yeah, but I don't think that's uh, recorded. Yeah, interesting, right? Yeah. The shadow economy. Yes, right. And let me ask another question, John. You said that low income pays 67%. That's a lot. So that means that the rest of the people, the rich people, are not paying taxes. Well, is that a. Uh, Within the tax code, there are exceptions that the government gets, gives to companies. Like, for example, if you build a company near Haiti, you uh, get a, more a exception, so you pay less taxes. And also, uh, if you invest in renewable energy, you get 100% a free tax. You don't have to pay taxes. And if you uh, build a company near us, free zone or some as you also get a, a Exemptions, and for example, if you uh, invest in something that's not very uh, developed in this country, like for example uh, the, the movie business, you if you make a company of uh, making movies, you get exemptions in your in your other company, so you pay less taxes, and at the same time you're doing something else that motivates uh, the people to to do something else and pay less taxes. At the same time. But in conclusion, the poor people are not paying for the taxes. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I wonder if it's the very poorest people. She said low. Yeah. Low near the average wage. So that's, I would say, not the most of the people. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what I. Because there's a whole class of people that aren't paying any taxes at all, right? Because they're just trading either goods or money yes. and never paying any But it's a, like a little bit lower than the middle class and or higher than the poorest. It's like a in between both. Okay. That, that's another interesting thing to find out is who is the cash economy? Can, is there any other questions? I have one more. I was so interested when you chose this topic because taxes are not usually someone that people your age are super fascinated by. So I am wondering why why you chose the topic. Like, what made you interested in the tax? Well, uh, most of you probably heard in the beginning. Uh, I constantly hear people complain about paying uh, taxes, and I just uh, wanted to see by myself what was it like and uh, if it's. Uh, really, uh, supposed to be uh, always complaining and uh, trying to figure out ways to make them if it's uh, that big of a condition. What did you decide about that? I decided that it is a condition that it needs uh, 
a lot of attention from the government. And that's why I suggest another type of work. Thank <laughs> you.